Welcome back to Sailing by Felicia. This week we drop our shiny sailboat back in the water. We have friends over for a renaming ceremony and we head to the pool for some scuba training. So we're settling into our new marina here and they have a really nice pool. So we should take a second and say that Lisa is already scuba certified. We wanted to share the whole process of her pool sessions and her open water checkout dives, but sadly no cameras are allowed in a classroom setting. We want to focus on what we're learning. So now that we're certified, we're going to get back in the pool and kind of walk you through some of the basic skills that you'll need to learn and then demonstrate in your checkout dives as part of the Patty Open Water Scuba Diving Program. So. You'll see that we're setting up our equipment um, and Matt is keeping his hands off so that way you can see that I know what I'm doing. One of the important things in scuba diving is repetition, so. Yeah, for sure, repetition, repetition. So that way it becomes second nature. So things that you want, I learned that you wanna check, um, that you have no leaks, that you can breathe through your regulator. Mm -hmm. Then when you're filling it with air, as you open your tank, make sure your computer is not facing you because if this thing explodes, then it might hurt you. Cool. So now that we're in the water, we're going to start going through skills. Skills are what you learn in the pool and you demonstrate in your open water checkout dives. There's about 20 of them. They vary in complexity and difficulty level, but we're going to show you some of the core skills. The first one is regulator recovery. Why don't you show them what a regulator is there, Lisa? Yeah, it's this guy right here. So it's the mouthpiece that you breathe in. Knock, knock everything over. So we have our primary and our octo. Octopus or octopus. alternate air source. The alternate air source. Why it's yellow. Anyways, I kind of struggled. First I did this way, which is the wrong way. No, you went the correct way. You just, one of the steps is you need to touch your leg. And oh, yeah. by not touching your leg, you allowed it to escape you. And then when we remember to touch our leg, then you came up with it. Let me walk you through what I'm doing here. So mask clearing. First, you remove your mask and let it flood completely with water. Put it back on. Now I'm gonna take a nice breath in. I'm gonna look up at the surface, causing all the water to get trapped against my cheekbones. Then I'm gonna push down on the top of the mask. And what that's gonna do is when I breathe out of my nose, all of the water will be forced out the bottom and will be replaced with air. So again, let's watch Lisa do it. She's gonna open her mask and completely flood it with water. She's going to take a nice breath in, she's going to look up at the surface, put a little pressure at the top of her mask, exhale through her nose, and by exhaling, she's filling the mask with air and displacing the water out of the bottom of the mask. And that's how you clear a mask underwater without ending a dive. The mask clearing one, I don't care for. It's just, it's very uncomfortable. You get chlorine or salt water in your eye. I don't like that. And I, I have long eyelashes, so they get extra liquid in them, and you can't rub your eyes, obviously, when you're wearing your mask. My tablet that's been around the world in 40 countries. I really like it, and my dad did too. It's kind of like a Etch-a-Sketch um, back when you were a kid. And then the opposite side has um, a slate with, that you can use a pencil on. Yeah, so for as an instructor it's, or a dive guide, it's the best tool. What I can do is I can have all 20 skills written on the back, and then when it's time to communicate something to my student, I just write it on the front. I bought this thing expecting about six months, maybe one year, um, <laughs> just because when you're a full-time uh, working diver, your gear uh, gets destroyed pretty quickly. 
and I've had that thing for eight years now. Granted, I only worked full-time as a dive instructor for a couple of those years, but um, yeah, that thing's been around the world with me, for sure. All right, removing and re putting on your vest. You do it two, two times. Once at the surface, and then again in the bottom. This one was probably the most frustrating one for me. I would get the straps twisted or the regulator tube stuck in there, and you can't see what's going on, so... I'm sure it was such a simple fix, but Matt couldn't help me, and I could tell he was just like, let's do a little tweak just to help me. Yeah, but look how great you did here. As you're putting it back on, you caught the twist in your inflator hose, and you corrected it in one motion. The first time you attempted this, that was what got twisted, and you clicked everything up, and you were just so frustrated you couldn't get it clear. And now, as you put it on, you immediately caught it and corrected it. So that's a great improvement in just a few uh, times practicing that skill. The baby shampoo is the best defog. <laughs> no more tears. And they make travel size. Okay, so here's how I would do it. Inflate. And here you see my uh, advanced uh, way to get back into the vest on the surface. Oh, I really liked it. So what Matt did um, to take it off on the surface is you have your chest up and you open it up like a blanket and it's kind of sitting open. Upside down towards me. Uh -huh. Arm straps are here. I put my arms in. Somersault into it. Uh, I may want to go underwater for this one. I hope we can run underwater. <laughs> and then once you're in it, you kind of float your back and just hook yeah, it back yeah. up. I wanted to get some more practice with buoyancy. buoyancy. It's important because you want to preserve the wildlife and everything out there in the ocean floor. So having neutral buoyancy, which means you're just perfectly floating in the water. Positive, you don't want that. Um, you're floating and negative, you're sinking. So the skill that we're, we're doing here is called the fin pivot or foot pivot. If you're neutrally buoyant, when you inhale you should rise a little bit and when you um, are exhaling you should fall a little bit the second thing we do is called the Buddha and basically what you do is you try to get the perfect amount of air in your vest and weight in your vest so that you're neutrally buoyant but then as your tidal volume of your lungs exchange you go in and out as you exhale that little bit of air will affect you and you'll go down and then as you inhale, you'll go up. When you're swimming along a reef, it's really easy to kind of maintain your, your neutral buoyancy because your fins are helping keep you there and whatever you're moving forward. But in the Buddha position, you grab your fins, you can't use your hands, you can't use your feet. It's all your lungs to keep you in that neutrally buoyant position. So it's really, really difficult and our pool wasn't very deep, so <laughs> we did the best we could. Uh, getting out of the water. It's so heavy. You're so weightless in the water, and then when it's time to get out, it's a real drag. So proper care of your gear, if you do choose to buy your own gear, is very important because it will help, it will have your gear last like a lifetime. Um, so we're washing all the chlorine off, I'm wanting to make sure it gets out of all the crevices, um, any pockets, just a really good rinse. Any questions about the process of getting scuba certified, how PADI works, uh, advanced courses, specialty courses, dive master course, any questions about anything scuba diving related, please leave a comment below. Lisa and I are going to do a question and answer video um, for scuba diving, and we'd like to hear what the questions are. Oh boy, today has been a very hectic day. Matt and I have been working vigorously on getting last minute things done. Uh, we are now splashed and we are getting ready for our denaming, renaming ceremony. Left the other two behind. Woo! Oh.
Luckily, Matt and I had a number of things we needed to get done that, quite frankly, I was shocked we were dropped in the water that day. The staff even stayed later to help us get in the water. We wanted to make sure that she was sealed tight and wouldn't take on any water. So we went through any potentially problematic areas and made sure those were nice and sealed, as well as paint the bottom of the rudder and let her sit for a bit so it may dry. Good news, she floats. And now we get ready for the denaming, renaming ceremony. <laughs> it's a ceremony. The boat ceremony consists of two parts. The denaming, where you need to remove all remnants of old name and put it on a little piece of metal. You have a speech you gotta do to the gods and then toss the old name overboard. Then the renaming consists of more speeches to the gods as well as giving some champagne, really nice champagne to them. And with any leftover alcohol, you give it all to your guest and have a party. and great ruler of the seas and oceans, to whom all ships be returned, venture upon your vast domain and require the people of it. I implore you and your gracious to expunge for all time from your records and recollection of the name of Margaret, which ceased to, prove, ceased to be an entity in your kingdom. As proof thereof, thereof submit this, may God bear her name to be forever corrupted And this conversation, we offer you for these vibrations to your majesty and your court. Cheese to us. much to appease the four wind gods yeah. oh mighty rulers of the <laughs> those power of frail vessels transverse wild and faceless deep we implore you to grant the worthy vessel by felicia and the benefits and pleasures of your bounty ensuring us on your gentle menstruation according to our needs <laughs> a gentle menstruation <laughs> <laughs> one each wind god okay uh, okay, great Boreas, <laughs> also the ruler of the Northland, grant us permission <laughs> in pursuit of all us endeavors, uh, even sparing us overwhelming surge from the frigid breath. Space left. All right. Oh my goodness. What do we got here? Repeating the champagne pour, top of our Great Zephyrus, <laughs> also the of the West Wind, grant us permission 
uh, to use your mighty powers in pursuit of lawful endeavors, even sparing us with overwhelming surge of your wild breath. Face east. Oh, all four? All four, yeah. Oh, We're shit. halfway there. <laughs> Great Eros! Exalted ruler of East Wind, grant us permission to use your mighty powers in the pursuit of lawful endeavors, even sparing us with the overwhelming surge of your mighty breath. Alright, south. Uh, great. Great Nodius, exalted ruler of South Wind, grant us permission to use your mighty powers in the pursuit of lawful endeavors, even sparing us with overwhelming surge of scalding breath. Oh. Champagne left and in the honor of the ceremony. Hey, let's drink it. That's all the reading. Yay! Yay. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this week's episode of Sailing by Felicia. If you haven't already, click the bottom corner of the screen to subscribe. Please leave us a comment, like, share. If you want to help us keep making videos, we need better cameras, we need better microphones, we need all the things. So if you can view our Patreon link in the description, anything you donate helps us keep making these videos. Also, we're going to suggest lots of gear that we use and uh, put the Amazon link down below in description. On a serious note, it's hot out there. Drink lots of water and watch out for waspuses. <laughs>